What's up, guys? This is the Gospel According to Mark with a C. He is I, and I am he. Just taking some time to tell you exactly what's on my mind. Thank you for joining me once again, my friends, and Happy New Year to all. Uh, hopefully, this is going to be a good year for us, guys. I know how it might seem right now, but you got to believe. You got to keep pushing, man. You got to be purposeful with all of this. Now, uh, listen, guys, uh, I want to do a commentary here about the tragedy of what happened to Uche Winari, okay? And um, it's, it's rough. It's rough because let me just say this. Uh, I did not know Uche personally. Never interacted with him, was never on a stream with him. I don't even think I commented on anything that he wrote on Twitter. And that was probably deliberate because one thing that I realized very soon after I started following Uche on Twitter is that I didn't agree with almost anything he said. You know what I mean? Almost everything he said, I was like, no, you know what I mean? I, I don't, nah, nah, not at all. So I didn't want to be like, I don't go on Twitter to be arguing with people. You know, I don't go on social media to be going back and forth with people because after all, how they feel is how they feel. That's their opinion. Everyone is entitled to that opinion, whether you agree with it or not. And it's cool if they feel the way they feel and you don't agree with it. Just because you don't agree with somebody doesn't mean that you wish ill or harm upon them. Okay, but we'll get back to that later. The point is, is that due to the fact that there were so many things that he said that I knew I didn't agree with, it didn't come as a surprise to me to find out that he was pro-jab, okay? This is something that he believed in. And um, of course, you guys, if you've been following me at all, you know that I am very much skeptical about this particular jab, okay? I'm not just anti-vaccine, but this thing right here, this mRNA thing, no, that's not happening, bro. It's not happening to me ever. It's like, if you hear about me keeling over, it won't be because I took that. There will be no speculation about that, okay? I think we all owe it to each other to put it out there. I mean, you know, it's confidential, our medical records, but in this environment that we're in now, there's just too much speculation. I think that we do owe it to each other to say whether or not we've taken this controversial thing, okay? But with all the differences that I perceive to have had with Uche, I think one thing that we had in common and the one thing that I respect the most about him and his memory, other than the fact that I love that he was so passionate in his beliefs, I truly respected that, would be the fact that he seemed very, very much committed to his family. He seemed like a very responsible and attentive father. And this is something that, of course, I do respect because that's me too. That's what I try to be every single day. Doesn't mean that I'm always right. You know, it doesn't mean that uh, I have all the answers. And neither did Uche. All he could do was go by what it is that he believed based upon the information that he had. And that's the reason why, guys, I want to do this video. Because one thing that I have noticed in the last week or so is this tendency of people to say that this is somehow karma, what happened to Uche. That somehow he deserved this because he was pro-jab. Now, guys, that makes about as much sense as if I were to come down with COVID and die from it. God forbid. All right, now I've already had COVID twice. I've recovered. I feel great. Stronger than ever, as a matter of fact. But nonetheless, anything could happen to me at any time. And it could be written off. You never know. As a COVID death. And there would be some people out there who would say, well, that's karma. Mark got what he, he deserved. He should have got the jab. Bet he's not feeling so uppity now. You know what I mean? So it's not fair and it's not cool to do that. I have my suspicions. This is an elephant in the room. All of us know how we feel about this. If you're watching this video, chances are you feel me when you know where I'm coming from with this, you know, but to be fair, Nobody knows. They're saying that he had a heart attack. It was a cardiac event. He was found unresponsive in his wife's house. You know, they're saying this. Nobody knows. Nobody can prove it. Okay, so you don't need to come in the comment section telling me, you don't know. You don't know it was that. You just want it to be that. Oh, you anti-vaxxers. No, nobody knows. But listen, that in itself is a problem. Two Two and a half, almost three years into this so-called pandemic. How is it possible that nobody knows? How is it possible that we don't have anything to go by? We don't have any information. 
And if you have no information, then you can't be informed. If you're not informed, how can you make an informed consent? And that's what this boils down to. I would love to be protected from infectious disease. I would love to have that protection, that assurance. But I don't because over three years into this, we have no more information as citizens as we had back then. The only thing that we have are commercials, little jingles, nurses dancing on TikTok telling us, trust it, trust the science, trust the science. And meanwhile, the science is having a civil war, or haven't you noticed? All of the doctors all around the world who are coming out to question the efficacy, the safety of this jab versus the establishment, which, by the way, is in the pocket of Big Pharma. What are we, the patients, the little people, what are we to make of all of this? Uche was no more wrong or right to take the stance that he took than I am to take the stance that I take. Okay, I saw, I saw all of the, uh, all of the things that he wrote on Twitter about being pro-mandate. You know, I saw all of the harsh words that he had for people who didn't want to get the jab. I saw it all. But that's the conclusion that he came to based upon the decision that he had. You know, based upon the information that he had. All right. Once again, no more wrong or right than the rest of us are. Okay. Because at the end of the day, it is a question of trust. The real tragedy here is that people were asked to trust this system that doesn't care about any of us. So we have to choose one way or another, all right? Some of us are on one side and some of us are on the other side. However, what we should not do is turn on each other. Because even though there are some people out there who are saying, I'm pure blood, I'm pure blood, we still share this air, man, you know? We still share germs and we share the atmosphere. We share this planet. We're one human race. So sooner or later, what afflicts some of us will end up afflicting all of us as a species if we don't get a handle on things like this. So you have people like Fauci who years ago, I remember saying, I predict there's going to be two Americas, the jabbed and the unjabbed. Brandon said that, um, what did he say? Um, it's going to be a, a disease or a pandemic of the unvaccinated. All right. But since then, what have we seen? For the first time since this pandemic has begun, the most people afflicted with COVID are indeed the jabbed. Look it up. Look it up. Once again, the information is out there, guys. We have the right to demand answers. These people are supposed to be working for us. And every time one of us falls, we should be demanding answers in much the same way I believe my brother came to me and said, are you just going to let me go this way? Don't you love me? Don't we love one another and respect one another enough to get some answers? Even if you believe in the jab, you want to rule it out. Just like somebody who is falsely accused of a crime. You want to rule them out. You want them to have their day in court. And you want it to be done by a jury of their peers. By us. Not some, some party who's got a financial interest in this. We're never going to get to the bottom of what's going on here. That way, the media is bought and paid for. The politicians are bought and paid for. The doctors are afraid to speak out. Too many of them. Even though more of them and more of them are actually speaking out. But until then, how many people are we going to watch fall out? You know what I'm saying? It gets more and more dire every single day. It may or may not be that this played a role in this. Maybe it didn't. But we need to know. They're starting to bring kids out. They want to make this mandatory for kids to take before they can go to school. Do we love our kids or not? We should know. We should know for sure. That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm demanding. And I believe we all should. So it's not right to condemn Uche or anybody else 
who stood up for that. They obviously did it because they trusted this system. Anytime you inject something into you, you're showing that you trust them. That's the tragedy. The tragedy is that there is a betrayal, a potential betrayal of trust here that needs to be addressed and needs to be confronted honestly and bravely. We have to stop looking away because we don't want this to keep happening. If by chance, this actually did play a role in what happened. I'm not saying it did, I'm not saying it didn't. You guys know how I feel. You know that I have my suspicions. However, it's just that. It's just my suspicions. And nothing should be above or beyond that. So guys, that's all basically I have to say about this. Once again, I send my condolences out to the family, to the friends of Uche, to all of us. Because we can't afford to keep losing each other, regardless of what our differences happen to be. And we've been struggling with this for a long time in this fandom. Naively, I used to think that we were rising to the challenge in this fandom of being able to accept one another for our differences, at least here. Because in this fandom of geeks and nerds and sci-fi addicts and all that stuff, we have been criticized for being toxic. And we pushed back against that. And in my own naivete, I thought that we were beyond that. But once again, that was just me being naive. We are, after all, human beings. And every human being is an individual with individual thought, critical thinking capabilities. So, of course, we're going to have these challenges. And I've made videos about this before where we have to challenge one another to remember that we are part of a community, a community of human beings, you know, despite our differences, despite diversity. Diversity is a good thing. But we have to remember, once we've gotten to know one another, there's no excuse to be insensitive to one another. We have that challenge. And tragically, what has happened with Uche, no matter what you might believe is behind all of this, tragically, this is a reminder, a much needed reminder to all of us that we are in this together. And if we do care about one another, our families, our friends, our acquaintances, then we have to rise to that challenge. We have to demand some answers. It's the only way that any of us will rest in peace, dead or alive. All right, guys, that's all I have to say about that. Thank you so much for listening. As always, you can follow, you know, uh, I think this is going to be an exclusive on Rumble, all right? This year, I think I'm going to start to slowly move away from YouTube because YouTube has been jerking me, but that's beside the point. That's not even what this video is about, but thank you guys for listening. Hope you drop a follow on Rumble, and um, I will catch you on the next one. Thanks again. This is The Gospel According to Mark with a C. Rock on.